tis the season to be jolly. The weather outside is frightful, but Fight Factory Weekly is oh so delightful. I am, of course, your host, the pretty boy, Peter Payne, and let's see what we've got coming up in today's episode of Fight Factory Weekly. Coming up on today's show, we focus on LFFW Training Academy's breakout star, the mustachioed Edward Ripper, and we see just what his involvement was at Body Slams to Cancer. And in tonight's main event, we take you back to two weeks ago at Legends. It's Aiden Drake versus an amazing opponent, handpicked by the one and only Miss Rebecca. All of that and so, so much more to come. But first, let's take you back to Body Slams to Cancer this past October at the Yarbrough Leisure Centre. It was an open challenge for Joey Osborne's LFFW Heavyweight Championship, and who should answer it? The steampunk sensation, Mr. Edward Ripper. Let's take to ringside and see how the action unfolded. The two of them now locked up in the middle of the ring. It's almost like two bulls charging there as Joey Osborne finally managed to get Ed Ripper to the corner. But no, Ed Ripper managing to fight his way back out. And such is the stalemate, the two men break up. And Ed Ripper there just saying, I can match you with power. Although taking too much time there to celebrate with the crowd, Joey Osborne from behind with a stiff forearm. And again, look at that clubbing blow to the back of Edward Ripper, dazing Ripper, and Ripper now in the corner as Jerry Osborne there taking the moment there to tell the crowd to shut up. Now, just hands around the throat, keeping on Edward Ripper here, not giving that second to try and get a breath and get himself back into this matchup, even though it's only at the early stages. Jerry Osborne there sending Ripper into the corner. And not look at that stiff shot to the jaw of Edward Ripper. That shot really did rock Edward Ripper, as now Joey Osborne sends Ripper into the corner. And look at that! Edward Ripper, forget the pump with a head of steam, just bulldozes his way through Joey Osborne now. Look at that! Big scoop slam there by Edward Ripper. And following through, keeping on. Joey Osborne, and another knee there. Ripper sending Joey Osborne to the corner, goes through, and charges there straight to the breadbasket of Joey Osborne. Now, the corner sends the opposite corner. What's going to happen here? As now, look at, sends through, and beautiful back body drop there by Edward Ripper. <laughs> Taking his time, but too much time, it has to be said, as Joey Osborne there manages to get a boot up, but he's going to try again, and no, second time, still unlucky. Big back elbow by Joey Osborne. And now Joey Osborne there just bulldozes himself with that big shoulder check to the steampunk sensation. And now slowing down the pace there. Oh. Literally draping the throat of Edward Ripper of that middle row. But look at that, though, taking the referee aside a second. And there, that, that, that red-headed mistress again, just choking Edward Ripper on that middle row, sending him back to the Victorian age even. And you can see right there exactly what uh, Joey Osborne was doing there. He was, like, complaining that the, that the photographer and the crowd were getting too involved. Finally, though, the referee turn his attention back to the matchup and their beautiful suplex by Joey Osborne lateral press can he get the pin no only a two count by Joey Osborne there <laughs> Joey Osborne had to say I, I, I Drew believed himself he could have put away the academy student with that suplex and look again just nonchalantly there strangling the steampunk sensation over that middle rope and again the referee admonishing Joey Osborne there, but look out and again. That red-headed mistress there as Joey Osborne keeps the referee away. And look at those forearms there by her. Jesus Christ. And again, just choking the steampunk sensation. And I'll tell you something right now. If the referee can't get a grasp of these tactics that Joey Osborne has used in this matchup so far, then it's going to be game over, Edward Ripper, very, very soon as Jerry Osborne there 
sends Ripper into the opposite corner. Following through ahead of steam and big clothesline. And look at that, building up the, building up the steam there, building up the momentum. And Jerry Osborne there, sidewalk slam onto Edward Ripper as he comes out the corner. Hook of the leg, one, two, only a two count there. And once again, Jerry Osborne there, taking liberties with the cover. Oh. Well, Jerry Osborne there, again, taking time to talk the crowd. You have to say, I don't think that really he appreciates the challenge that Edward Ripper can pose in this matchup. And now Jerry Osborne stalking Ripper from behind. And another shot to the gut there of Edward Ripper. And a head but I'll tell you what, listen to the crowd. They're really getting behind Edward Ripper at the moment. Wants him to work his way out, try and mount some sort of comeback. Although when you've got a boot in the throat choking like that, how on earth can he manage a comeback? As there, Jerry Osborne there, really taking advantage of that five count, waiting for the absolute last split second before removing that boot from the throat of Edward Ripper. And look at the face of Ripper there. He certainly must be back in the Victorian times at the moment. But look at that though, reversal into the corner. Look at that head of steam, that steampunk splash. The opposite corner again, goes for two. No, look at that there. Cartwheel into the back elbow with authority. And opposite corner again, getting the momentum. But no, look at that there. Wiley veteran move from Jerry Osborne with the huge experience advantage. Just using the momentum of Edward Ripper there and sending him through that middle rope. Ripper now trying to regain his thoughts on the outside. Look at this. Joey Osborne off the ropes. He goes for a dive through that middle rope. Such a risky move there by Joey Osborne. You've got to wonder, is it finally start to dawn on him that Edward Ripper can actually mount an offense and potentially pin him down for the one, two, three. And time will tell with that, but Joey Osborne now inside the ring, letting the referee use his 10 count on the outside. Referee there, nip. Well, it's getting very close. And Joey Osborne, again, back on to Edward Ripper, trying to slow him down. Again, choking that boot on the throat as Joey Osborne there is literally standing on the life force almost of the steampunk sensation. Slap there by Jerry Osborne, my God. Normally you'd expect such wins off Miss Rebecca, but no, Jerry Osborne there with a slap of his own. Now, what's this? Off the ropes, back elbow there. Not quite knocking down the steampunk sensation, but certainly hurting him badly. The ropes again. It's gonna happen, a big clothesline lariat there by Jerry Osborne. And surely this has got to be it now. Lateral press, two, no. Edward Ripper still able to kick out. I'll tell you what, Vin, at the moment, win or loss, Edward Ripper has certainly done himself proud in this matchup against the LFW heavyweight champion, Jerry Osborne. Jerry Osborne, though, again, keeping on Edward Ripper there. Picks him up the scoop and the slam. Look at that slam there. And now Osborne off the ropes. <laughs> Taking his time. And there's that leg drop. We've seen that before many a times. Taking time to taunt Edward Ripper and the crowd. And you've got to wonder, is that really a smart move by Joey Osborne? Off the ropes again. Go for a second, but look at that Edward Ripper move. And Joey Osborne there, hit the pool with no water in it. And now Ripper back on top, with clotheslines and shoulders. And cinches him up. Is he going for the suplex here? Suplex, what? He's holding on this. This is the three gentlemen I'm presuming he's going for here. Can he hit the second? Number two. Can he hit the third? And there it is, the three gentlemen by Oda Ripper. Floats over, cover, hook of the leg. Can this be it? No, 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 it will not be. 
Joey Osborne managing to kick out. Now Ripper off the second rope. Look at that beautiful splash there. One, two, three, no. Oh, I thought that was it. I really honestly thought that could have been it. And we had a new Fight Factory Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Wow, though, I'll tell you what, the momentum's finally sh shifted. The crowd can feel it. And Ripper now taking his time, wanting Joey Osborne to get back up so he can put that finishing blow on. You've got to believe he's looking for a spear at some point, but no, look at that hot shot there. Over the top rope by Joey Osborne. Again, using that, attacking the throat of Edward Ripper. And now Joey Osborne looking for that Urinachi slam. He hits it. He hits it. He remains the head. What on earth? Who's on the sound desk? Why is Robbie X's music playing? I don't. I, I, I'm I'm a bit baffled. What on earth? And Joey Osborne there. I just can't believe it either. He, well, there's confusion here at the moment of body slams to cancer. Nobody quite. My God, there is Robbie X. What on earth is he doing out at the moment? What? I mean, he is the number one contender for the League of Fight Factory Wrestling Heavyweight Championship, but I don't quite understand why he's out here tonight. I mean, you've got to believe if Joey Osborne did retain the Heavyweight Championship here tonight, the next opponent would be Robbie X. But no, look at that. Edward Ripper is up. Edward Ripper is measuring the champion. Can it be? There it is! Spear! Spear! The hook of the leg! Can it be? Have we really? New champion! My God! Edward Ripper has done it! My sweet dear Cogs! just exploded. The steampunk sensation from the LFW Academy has just become the League of Fire Factory Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Oh, what a moment here. The body slams to cancer. And there he is, the belt held high. With Robbie X there. Words with Jerry Osborne. But does that really matter now? You're new. Lincoln Fight Factory Wrestling Heavyweight Champion is Edward Ripper. I can't believe it. She can't believe it. Joey Osborne can't believe it. The crowd can't believe it, but my God, they're loving it. Look at that. Look at that sight there. What a moment here. Body slams to cancer. What, what on earth? Oh God, that's Shane Manson. Yes, he is part of the Fight Factory Academy and also now heavyweight champion. crowd there letting their feelings known towards Shane Manson. Well, Robbie X has come out and distract Joey Osborne, but surely Joey should have kept his mind on the match. No. as David Cameron in a miner's town. That is just horrendous. 
Edward Ripper hit Jerry Osborne with the spear. Edward Ripper kept his shoulders down on the canvas for one, two, three. And yet, by a decision reversal by Shane Manson, your winner by disqualification is Jerry Osborne. Jerry Osborne retains, and Edward Ripper saying there, I've got your number, mate. And there is Shane Manson, the man, the man that reversed the decision. And because of that decision being reversed, your winner by disqualification is that man right there. Retaining the Lincoln Fight Factory Wrestling Heavyweight Championship is Jerry Osborne, but for how long? We were all on our feet thinking that Edward Ripper had captured the LFFW Heavyweight Championship, but no. At the last second, it was cruelly ripped from his grasp by Shane the Man Manson. Absolutely heartbreaking there for Ripper and all of his steampunk fans. But that wasn't the last we'd see of Mr. Ripper at Body Slams to Kansas. Oh no. Because he entered the D Mansell Rumble match and almost won it, being pipped to the post by Lincoln's own Robbie X. But Mr. Ripper did get a little bit of retribution on Shane the Man Manson, hitting him with a deadly spear on the outside. And after Slams to Cancer, we managed to sit down with Edward Ripper to get his thoughts on that past event and delve a little bit deeper into the personality of the steampunk sensation. Yeah, yeah, come with a bit of a surprise to myself, but he gave the open call out, so I thought I'm the man to answer it realistically. I thought was, I can beat him, I went out there, did just that. Everything Joey threw at me, I had an answer for it. Until Shane and my man to come out and did his usual cowardly trick. As you can see, I went out there, defeated the champion. So, it, in my heart, I am the champion. I might not actually have the belt on myself, but I beat him, I was there for the pin. Shane and my man to come out. He can't do anything. All he's at the mouth. He, he got he got what was coming to him. But the spear was, was the least I could do, just for his troubles. I used to hold him in quite high esteem, being the champion, seeing him do some good victories against some good opponents. But going out there and beating him, I realise actually it's not a man. It's not a man at all. It's the gentleman's gone out there and systematically took him apart. More of what you're seeing. He's going to go out there do his thing, do his best, take apart anybody that gets put in front of him. If Shane Man Manson wants to keep throwing all these opponents who think they can beat Edward Ripper, he's going to lose. He's just going to come more in order with myself. Thank you for coming and support, guys. Just keep there. Keep wearing the moustaches. I'll be there for you guys. Boy, Edward Ripper sure loves his fans, but there's one person that he doesn't love, and that is Shane the Man Manson. And I, for one, cannot wait to see how that rivalry unfolds as we continue further down the line. But it's now time for tonight's main event, which sees the sinister Aiden Drake take on a pretty amazing opponent. Nick Raven's got all the action for you. Let's throw you to ringside. And welcome back to the second half of LFFW's Legends, right here at the Birchwood Leisure Center as we await the arrival of Aiden Drake. Peter coming to the ring by Desiree. Weighing in at 140 pounds, hailing from parts unknown, he is Aiden Drake. The sinister brother and sister combination. Aiden Drake, Desiree, do not underestimate Aiden Drake. Because trust me, whatever he may lack in stature and size, he sure as heck makes up for in his ability and just the way he can pick out body parts, exploit weaknesses, target them, and just batter it into submission. There is no mercy. There is no compassion. That's what makes Aiden Drake a true competitor and so dangerous in that ring. But enough talking. That's the 
challenge there by Aidan Drake, set out earlier in the week. On, um, I think we're going to get an answer. Aidan Drake put out that challenge on social media early in the week, putting out the open challenge. He was booked to appear at Legends because of that. And now we have Miss Rebecca on her way to ringside, and maybe she's going to give us the answer as to who Aidan Drake will be facing tonight at the Birchwood Ledger Centre. Look at that there, though. Miss Rebecca smiling. That's not something you see very often. shall we say, as, as normal. And it almost seems like Matt Myers is trying to psych out Aidan Drake. Just trying to get him out of that just deadly cold mindset. And there, Jeff there, calling for the bell. And this contest is underway. Did you just say Little Matt? I said Little Matt. Matt Myers there trying to get into the mind of Aidan Drake referring to the fact that, like I said earlier, he's not the tallest guy in the world. He's not the biggest star uh, guy in stature. But, well. Aidan Drake there trying to slap Matt Myers. Matt Myers blocking it. And now Matt Myers inside headlock into wrist lock. Now transitioning into that neck ringer. a slap on the back. And Matt Myers in firm control early on in this matchup. Side headlock there for Aiden Drake trying to work his way out of it. Elbows into the gut of Matt Myers. Throws them off into the ropes. But there, Matt Myers with a shoulder barge. Oh, goes through, but no. Over, crosses over, and Matt Myers there with the hip toss. Great right there recoiling, and Matt Myers follow through into the ropes. Big elbow. Whips Aiden Drake off into the opposite corner. What's going to happen here? Matt Myers getting the crowd into this. Goes into the corner. Monkey flip out the corner there onto Aiden Drake, and Aiden Drake rolls to the outside. And it has to be said, so far this matchup, advantage, Matt Myers, as he goes off the ropes, but no, look at that, Desiree there on the outside, and that's an important fact as well. 
Desiree could very easily make all the difference. This matchup was there. Look at that. Aiden Drake from behind getting the ring with that shot block there, taking out the left knee of Matt Myers. And I tell you what, Aiden Drake was lacking stature, but he's no longer if Matt Myers is going to struggle to stand up. But Matt Myers there working through at the moment. Scoot slam into lateral press. Two, two, two count only there by Matt Myers. Slight favour in that knee but still able to work through it at the moment, but that has got to damage the knee of Matt. Wow, got to damage the knee of Matt Myers as that vicious chop there to Aiden Drake. Slap, chop of that ring through this sports hall here at Birchwood, and again! It's Chop City right here in Lincoln tonight. Oh, oh. Jesus Christ, did you see that kick? And I tell you what, if that chop block did not take out the knee of Matt Myers, that kick sure as hell did. As there, look at that on the apron now. Aiden Drake throwing that knee into the corner of the apron. Again, just attacking all the ligaments and just trying to make Matt Myers. As there, look at that. Whipping that leg, that knee around that ring post. Damaging it further. Looking to turn Matt Myers into a one-legged man in an ass-kicking competition. As there, look at that Desiree now, continuing to add insult to injury by attacking that leg on the outside herself as Aiden Drake distracts the referee. Matt Myers, though, make his way back in the ring, but once again, favouring that knee. And now, again, look at this. Aiden Drake there, just... Wow. Putting all the weight he has on that left knee. Wrenching that knee around the body, just anything he can to cause pain and to stop Matt Myers from being able to put any weight on it. Trying to level the playing field when it comes to size. As now Matt Myers trying to work his way back out, favouring that knee. And look at that drop kick there by Aiden Drake. Cover two. Only a two count though by Aiden Drake. And my has this match turned now with Matt Myers down to one leg. Now, Aiden Drake trying to rip Myers into the corner. Man, is it? And look at that. Just ferocious there. Matt Myers just literally whipping off that corner. And, and just that impact whiplash on him. It's unbelievable. And again, the exact same leg being whipped around that ring post on the outside. Matt Myers will not be able to stand. It has to be said. And look at that, just a small kick. Just taking little digs now, Matt Myers, lateral press again. Two, only a two count though by Aiden Drake. Aiden Drake trying to pick up Matt Myers now. But Matt Myers, oh look at that block then. Reverse kick with that right leg. And now spring balls off that second rope. And look at that Lucha style arm drag there by Matt Myers. Trying to get himself a little bit of momentum. Ducks the clothesline now. Picks him up for a scoop slam. He gets it. Left knee still bobbing him an awful lot, but he's, he's, yeah, he's going for it. That Springboard second rope there into that moonsault signature move of Matt Myers, but look how he landed that knee. Managing to get the cover, but that was enough there. You've got to believe to give Aiden Drake the chance of kicking out. Crowd heavily on the side here, Matt Myers, but again, he's still struggling with that left knee from that earlier assault by Aiden Drake. And now Aiden Drake there catches. It was effective, it was simple, and effect look at that roundhouse there by you, Aiden Drake. Cover two. Wow, well, I thought that could have been free. I thought he knocked Matt Myers clean out of that roundhouse kick. But like I was saying though, Aiden Drake, this is what he does. He picks apart and just relentlessly attacks it, is now exposed in the knee. And what's he going for here? Some sort of inverted figure four, rolling three-quarter figure four leg lock there. Just look at the torque and the pressure being put on that exposed knee of Matt Myers. And I'll tell you one thing, who can blame Matt Myers for tapping out after the damage already been done to that knee? Look at that though, Desiree there pulling the rope away, trying to avoid the rope break. 
referee not seeing it yet. Jeff not quite catching on, but they're catching a glimpse. But Desiree still trying to stop the road break from happening. Finally, the road break happens. And Desiree again trying to... What? That, that's Tegan Scott from the Academy. Well, I'm not quite sure why she's out here, but it appears she's had another Desiree. It is timely ejecting her as Matt Myers there managed to kick off Aiden Drake to try to take the advantage. Oh, look at that, they're inside cradle there by Matt Myers. Two, three, he gets it. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, the amazing Matt Myers. And Matt Myers there with an inside cradle out of nowhere with that damaged knee, managing to pick up the one, two, three. I tell you one thing though, Aiden Drake got very close. Matt Myers nearly submitted, very nearly, but today was the day for the amazing Matt Myers. Uh, Miss Rebecca gave me a call earlier on in the week. She said she'd like to have me here. She said she wasn't sure what she was going to do with me yet, but she'd like to have me on hand just in case she needed me. Uh, I'm happily obliged to be here. Um, so yeah, when I was told obviously what I'd be doing, this open challenge against Aidan Drake, I was quite happy to. Now Aidan Drake is someone who caught my eye the first time I came to Lincoln Fight Factory because I saw a lot of potential in him. I didn't like his character, I didn't like his attitude, but I saw potential in him as a person. Obviously, after the last few months, I've seen a different side to him. I've seen that he isn't all that. He hasn't got the potential that I thought he had. So to be in there and teach him a lesson tonight was a real, it was good fun to be fair. It just gave me the distraction that I needed to get on top. You know, he was taking my leg out. It took me a while to get up. I was struggling to get to my feet, but all I needed was that one distraction to turn the tide, get back on top and steal the win from Aidan Drake. I think Aidan Drake, now after I face him, you know, he has proved me wrong. Um, he's a smart lad. You know, I'm a little bit bigger than him. So obviously he went for the knee. I'd have done the exact same thing in his position. You know, he knows what he's doing. He knows his opponent. And to have that quick thinking, especially when the match was called that quick on the fly, you know, it was, it was smart of him, so for that he has my respect. Just be careful going against Aidan Drake. You know, he's, he, he might be a short, skinny lad, but he's not daft. You know, he'll, he'll pinpoint your weaknesses and he'll take advantage of them pretty quickly, so just keep on the defensive when you're wrestling Aidan Drake. Matt Myers picking up the victory there despite a vicious attack by Aidan Drake and the involvement of Drake's little sister, Desiree. Tegan Scott making sure she didn't interfere too heavily. Well, if you want more LFFW action, how about heading over to the Birchwood Leisure Centre on the 20th of December as we present the 12 bouts of Christmas. As always, if you want your tickets, you can go to the venue in person or visit www.linkswrestling.co.uk. Well, that's all we've got time for today. I have been the pretty boy Peter Payne saying you're beautiful, I'm beautiful. Take care, see you soon. Now